Hello everyone, it's Amanda Watson from MrsWatsonEducation.com, my personal blog where I get to share with you the other fabulous teachers of the world, some tips and tricks I picked up along the way. So today's topic is why you should, you need to make a sub plan and emergency binder all in one together that looks just like this. So the great thing about today's um, video is if you're actually accessing it from my blog, you will get a free download of the materials I'm gonna go over in this so you can edit them um, and make your own very easily. Um, so don't forget to go to mrswatsoneducation.com to access my actual blog if you're watching this just from YouTube. So let me go into this screen so you can kind of see what it looks like. So I have developed a one inch binder that um, I actually developed it for my second school I taught at. They gave all the new teachers one of these with some um, files in it already that was really really handy and it was for substitute teachers that they had prepared so all we had to do is add our lesson plans and it was brilliant um, because it had so many things that I as a substitute teacher appreciated to have. Now, substitute teacher. I started teaching right out of college without any experience, not a sub, not anything. And I just figured it out. I don't know how my my principal saw something in me. I don't know what he saw, but I'm so thankful for him. But my first, and because no one like really taught you like what's a sub, what's a good sub plan, what should you include, what should you have available. So I had everything typed out, written out, like detailed plans. And I just want to tell you from the perspective of a sub, because I'm a military spouse, which means I had to start my career over and over and over again from scratch, um, which is very frustrating. Um, but in some of the transitions, because military moves don't happen great times in the school year. I've um, either been a sub before I left a different place because I didn't want to commit to a full school year or when I came in it was the end of the school year so I subbed until I figured out if I liked that place and was hopefully was able I was got a full-time job there so I've subbed on two different instances in different places and as a substitute teacher um, that was a full-time teacher I saw it from a whole new perspective. And I was able to learn so many great things about other people's classrooms, but about what a good sub plan includes and what a sub needs to know. So this is kind of where I um, have refined this over time from my experience as a substitute teacher, um, what teachers should include in this. So this is just a one inch binder. And you can see here, um, it has the pockets in there. And once again, I'm going to include this in my blog um, as a free download if you go to my blog page for this. And in the first inside cover I like to have the pockets in here because this is where I put um, and it's very nice as a substitute teacher to have this um, the, the slips in the like the school forms that might be needed because you know students don't act the same way they do for you in the classroom even with the most seasoned sub so detention referrals um, very important like if your school has clinic passes things that the students might need um, dress code violation slips stuff like that I also like to add just a few like little um, band-aids in there so that the substitute teacher has that and they don't have to go like rummaging through drawers and try to find stuff. Um, and then you start into the dividers. Now, I have kind of confined this all to four main tabs of information that are very valuable for a substitute teacher and you because this is going to duel as your emergency binder. I'll explain that as we go through. So the first tab is going to be your lesson plans because of course, as a substitute teacher coming in, that's going to be the most important thing. What is your job to do with those students that day? Um, so I like to have that open. When I, sub when I set up my room for a sub, I have this binder on my desk open to my lesson plan page. So it's the first thing they see coming in. Now, something I learned as a substitute to teacher that I wasn't really aware of as a regular teacher is that sometimes subs get called in very last minute. Sometimes subs get called in um, and it takes a while to get the keys and for someone to walk into the room and open the door. And so even if you come with the best intentions of having 45 minutes, 30 minutes before bell rings, sometimes you have five minutes before the students show up. So it's very important as a teacher you think about that and the lesson plans you leave are like one page, short, nice and sweet, easy to follow, big things like highlighted and pointing out to you because as a teacher coming in a substitute teacher like you're in a new place you have students at the door and you're trying to figure out the worksheets and where everything is just have it nicely laid out that's one thing i've learned the hard way and i feel so bad for them in my original subs before i figured this out because i left like detailed plans and they don't I'll show you where they could add information. So in my um, template, you'll see um, in the, my free download on my blog, you'll see my, my sub template where I kind of make it like a nice one pager where you have a quick overview of the whole day, then your activity, and it's nice and sweet. You could see how you could use that to adapt. Behind or directly kind of, sometimes I have it laying out right, like kind of over each other. Um, I like to have a classroom log 
And I, let me see if I can show you this. So recommendations, oh yeah, lesson one tab, yeah. Um, here's my recommendations. So you'll get all of these in the free download. Um, that's my lesson plan. You can see it's nice and short and sweet. You have a kind of overview of the day, different little notes, quick little summary of what the lesson's going to be. That's it. Now behind that lesson plan, I like to have this page. Um, you can see here, this is going to be your report for like the classroom log when students are leaving. I like to see when I come back to my classroom, like an overview, why did seven students leave my class during one period? Is there something going on? Like something I could see very quick, um, quickly. I also like to leave this for my subs too, um, right below the lesson plan so it's very easily available for them if they choose to use it. It's not a requirement, but I always like to have notes about what went well, what didn't go well, so I know what to address. Um, the student helpers names, you know, everything that like I want to know as a teacher, who was doing good and who wasn't and this is very nice you can see here this is a feedback I got from a sub last year you know it's very nice and concise as a substitute teacher without having that sometimes I'd want to and I would be like where do I put that next to the lesson plan I want to give them more details like this kid was being very you know had a lot of questions and wasn't sure what was going on you might need to spend more time with them so it's nice to have a place for the substitute teachers to record the notes as they see fit so that you are informed when you come back. Um, depending on your school, you might want to have like three emergency lesson plans. I put these in just a sheet protector all together. So those are like the something happened to me on the way into work and I don't have sub plans ready to go, but there's something available. Um, so that's my first tab and that's kind of cool. So my second tab is my classroom map and rosters. Now, as a substitute teacher, it's very important that you leave, as a teacher, for your substitute teacher, an overview of the classroom from the teacher perspective, like the student seats. Where should they be um, if that's something you care about as a teacher? Some teachers have open lesson, uh, um, open seating and they can sit wherever, but sometimes you have students separated for a reason. And when the sub comes in and they see the sub at the door, they like to change their seats around. And most of the time, the good kids in the class will tell you the next day if that happens. But it's very nice for a sub to know, like, no, your name's this, you're not supposed to be there. Um, this is where you're supposed to be instead. So you could be proactive about some of those behavior issues that the kids might try to pull. Um, it's just a very nice thing. So I like to have like an overview of the class and what it looks like, and I'll write in the students' names there um, for the substitute to see. Included also in this tab is my rosters, my official rosters with all my students' names in them. And that's important as well because this is going to be your emergency binder as well. So when there's an emergency situation, I grab this binder because it's, it has everything I need in it. It has my rosters in it so I could call roll and make sure everyone's there if we had to evacuate the building for whatever reason. So that's there for me as well. Um, if your school doesn't provide the sub, like most of them do, like an attendance sheet, that's where it'd be nice for them to have those rosters as well. Now my third, so that sorry, that includes what things I should have. So my third tab is my emergency procedures tab. So that looks like this. You can see the cool little emoji I found for that, um, which you can use yours. Um, recommendations, I like to have in this tab, um, one of my schools, we were required to have a green sheet of paper with our name on it. So if we were evacuated, everything was good. All students were there. This is what we held up. Admin could see it very clearly that there was no distress. And if there was a student missing or something going on, we held up the red one so they could click, quickly come to us to help us as needed. Um, my current school doesn't have set procedures like that, so it's kind of stranger, but I still have that because that's what I was trained to do. I also include in there the procedures. So things I get in the beginning of school during pre-planning, you will probably go to a meeting on emergency procedures at the beginning of school. They give you information there. I just hole punch that paper, all the stuff they give me, and I put it in this binder because if it's important for me to know as a teacher, it's important for a sub. I do not know. I, so I went twice to some different schools. I had no idea what the schools were. And on those days I was there, I had to be the teacher in charge of the drills when there was a fire drill that happened. So all these students are counting on me to get them to safety. Thankfully, they were they kind of knew what was going on, and I knew enough about the basics of drills. But I like some schools have different procedures. Like you have to wear a vest, and you have to go there, and you have to wait until this. Make sure your sub has access to those because if you don't know, you're going to be sick. Sometimes um, you don't know what drills are going to be going on, so or what emergency situations may happen. So if it's important for you to know as a teacher, like the evacuation routes and any kind of quick sheets about information what to do um, for different protocols put it in the sub binder because not only will you have it for your reference like I said I keep this binder very visible so if there's a drill that goes on I grab it and go and this is what I take with me even though it's my sub binder it's my emergency binder too and again if it's important for you it's important for a sub for emergency situations now my last tab 
is my school protocols. Um, I subbed at an elementary school that has lots of protocols and thank goodness I had great second graders that were able to tell me how we went to the PE and how we went to lunch and how went dismissal, all the things that I needed to know. I had no idea and it would have been really nice to know about those things somewhere even if you know it was during my lunch break halfway through the day where I could start reading and see oh yeah yeah I messed that one up oh yeah because as the adult when you come as a sub you like you want to be the adult in charge and sometimes you have no idea how to do that so put that information here in this tab also a school map that shows very important where the adult bathrooms are teachers don't let your subs be wandering around looking for the facilities when they need to use them. They have a short amount of time, just like you. Make sure they know where to go and what they need to do because it's really difficult as a substitute teacher. Like, okay, I have to go to the bathroom. Where is it at? Okay, am I going to the student bathroom? Because I've had to do that. I've had to use a student bathroom and that's okay. It was a place I could use, but it was uncomfortable, right? So let your subs know where they need to go. Don't expect them to know it. Sometimes you have subs that are always at your school. They would never need to look at this part of the tab of your folder. But sometimes you have emergency subs that come in because your other subs are being used. There's a lot of teachers out. They need to know this information. They need to know where the nurse is. They need to know where the media center is, where your favorite um, partner teacher is that can help them. Those are things that are important. It also, um, the full bell schedule. So in my lesson plans, I do like a shortened schedule. This will have all the details on it. And then I also like to include like a frequently called phone list. Um, so again, any papers that I get during pre-planning that helped me function as a teacher um, that I put in here and that's for me to have so I have it my sub has it and everyone knows how to do their job hopefully when there's a situation that arises now um, the last thing I want to say is very be, be very careful with what information you do include to sub sometimes I've been in this classroom as a sub and I know the legal stuff like I know as a teacher like I shouldn't know their IEP but there's details left. I shouldn't even know they have an IEP. I shouldn't know that students have 504 student. And teachers leave information. So you wanna leave information that's valuable for the substitute to help the students out, but be very cautious about how much you leave and what's legally required, like what you shouldn't be leaving. Um, so just be very careful about that. That doesn't happen very often. Um, most people are very good about that, but just be aware of those legal, legal things. So leave the information, but protect yourself still because you got to protect your students, right? Um, so that's kind of my sub plan binder. Like I said, this, um, this power, this presentation, you will have available to edit and do what you'd like. Um, and hopefully you'll find it helpful and don't make the same mistakes I did as a teacher going in before I knew better. Um, learn from my experience as a sub, what's helpful and make something that's helpful for you. I made this about six, five, six years ago. Um, I used the one that my school gave me as a template. I added a little bit more and it's the same one. I just update the information every year when I go to those meetings and it's great. And then I just insert my new lesson plans. So once you make it, it's set and it's good for you to go. So hopefully you enjoy that. Hopefully it helps you and your substitute teachers be prepared to be the best um, subs for you when you can't be there for your students. Hopefully that's not too often, but we never know when you need it. Bye, take care. Oh, and like, oh, if you like anything you saw or heard, I'm so bad at this stuff. Um, Subscribe, follow, like, wherever you want to go to stay connected to me and my blog. So this again, bye.